Welcome to Circuosity. I'm your host, Jim Strader Sasser. Thank you for listening. Circuosity exists to provide you and me a curious and informative exploration of our personal, spiritual, and experiential habits those that serve a purpose of creating well-being and those that we might shine some light on to help us become more the person we could be and thereby make our families, our neighborhoods, our businesses more loving, more compassionate, and more productive. I have three objectives for today. First, I want to offer a reflection upon a fascinating contemplation that Silas Lee did on Insight Timer. Silas's contemplation is entitled A Contemplation on Ignorance, and it provoked me to think about my work that I'm presently doing on complaining, and I'm now in day 18 of my Complaint Free Challenge, and so I'm trying to blend together lessons from these two possibilities. And third, I just want to have some fun and offer everyone who's listening some meaningful information about how they might consider contemplating on ignorance and taking actions to bring insight and calm into their lives and to the lives of those they live with and those they serve. So let's begin. I would like to paraphrase some themes from Silas Lee's contemplation on ignorance. Silas says, Our development of a meditative practice offers us intentional time and space to shine out awareness onto our ignorances or our ignorance. In this practice, we are focusing mindfulness onto our views, experiences, and attachments I would add that, in Christian terms, we are taking a look at our passions or our sins. Ignorance is based upon our presumptions of reality. And Silas notes how the Buddha suggested that a fool who discerns his ignorance gains understanding and therefore becomes wiser. However, a fool who assumes that he is wise expresses and shares his foolishness. My experience of complaining is that it is a habit based upon ignorance, that typically when we complain, we are stating some sort of feeling or emotion about a circumstance or a person or a reality that lacks insight and wisdom. Complaining only offers wisdom when someone gains awareness of the circumstances, experiences, attachments or passions provoking the complaint. By definition, ignorance means to lack wisdom or unknowing. And the term complain derives from the Latin term for lamentation or an expression of suffering. Buddhism teaches us to express our awareness of suffering's existence and to state that it is in fact true and part of being human. Christianity teaches us that it is through suffering that resurrection or rebirth or creativity becomes more likely and indeed possible if not probable. So if we have an habitual pattern of being ignorant and therefore expressing suffering through our complaints, what might we do rather than continue to complain and continue to be ignorant?
I'll begin this section by stating that I am in fact a fool when it comes to understanding all the intricacies and wisdom of Buddhism. I do not know everything about the theology or the practices or the spirituality that I would like to. It would be really cool to have someone like Silas or another Zen Buddhist expert to help me gain understanding. I am aware of the Eightfold Path, and I know that a core truth of the Eightfold Path in Buddhism is that there are particular right ways of being that enlighten us, reduce suffering, and bring us to a place of greater depth in our humanity. The Eightfold Path includes right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So in terms of complaining, the Eightfold Path provides an awareness for acknowledging the complaint, acknowledging the suffering, and some key processes for doing something about said complaint that lies within our sphere of influence. From a Christian perspective, the teachings of the Catholic Church say that God's Holy Spirit offers us seven gifts. These gifts are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and quote-unquote fear of the Lord, and I would redact that gift to awe, a sense of being in relationship with God that provides deeper love, deeper compassion, and deeper respect for creation and for ourselves. For those who may not like spiritual doctrines, I would offer the circle way. The Circle Way principles say that we should create a center for creative growth. We should be about the business of creating a container with an outer rim of our circle that's dynamic, resilient, and conversational. We should adhere to some basic principles, such as listening attentively to ourselves and to other people, speaking intentionally out of mindfulness that we should indeed incorporate silence in the daily practices and into the conversations that we have. And in all things, a primary purpose is to seek and achieve well-being. So each of these three broad sets of principles and practices offer wisdom in terms of bringing light to our ignorance and providing steps for becoming a better person and a better community. I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast that I'm now on day 18 of my complaint-free challenge experience. 18 days ago, a friend of mine offered me an opportunity to take a look at the amount of complaining that I do for 21 days and see if I could try to go a three-week period without any complaints. And I decided to take on this challenge and use the plan, do, check, act model or PDCA model as a means for navigating my way through the challenge. So here's what I've observed. My plan was and is to identify an improvement opportunity. In this case, to shine awareness onto the reasons for complaining in my life and in the lives of other people. I wanted to see what I was ignorant about in terms of the complaints that I have with politics, with God, with my relationships, and so on. And I came to understand fairly quickly in these three weeks that a lot of my complaining is based upon my impatience, 
my intolerance of things not happening as quickly as I would like for them to, and a passion of a desire or an attachment to control outcomes to say that the world should work as Jim Strader Sasser says it should work. And so with a bit of compassion and a bit of shame, I understood that impatience and passion to control outcomes are in fact rather childish habits and attachments to mental, physical, and spiritual pain, rather than acquiring more spiritual habits of contemplation and action Throughout this process, I've considered resources, and I'm very grateful for Silas Day and Hugh Byrne and the time that I have to spend with them and the resource that I have to have an insight timer and to learn from so many people who are walking spiritual pilgrimages and doing their best to make the world a better place to be. I've talked about this complaint-free process in informal conversation with friends and with my beloved spouse and informal conversations such as my sermons at Christ Memorial Episcopal Church. And indeed, I have taken to heart the need for me to spend intentional time in contemplation, documentation, and praxis. So it is with this plan that I have reminded and reinforced my desire to be less of a complainer. I have documented the process on Facebook, I have journaled in my Panda Planner and in other places like on my computer. And I have checked in with specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goals. And I am learning that boring and routine is good. And that while lofty goals are exceptional and wonderful, they may only be for special cases. And in my case, it is really more important for me to take small, steady steps. So how's it going as I come on the last three days? Well, I got bored with my initial idea of taking a look at 21 minute chunks of time of no complaining. I have in fact taken daily and weekly what I hope to be honest evaluations of the process. I've become okay with failure. I realize that every now and then that I will complain and that I will not be perfect and I've stayed with the process, just like I've stayed with other processes in the past, and I become and relearn that by putting mindful attention on something, it will bring maturation and growth. In terms of acting and adapting, I have recalled this purpose and continue to think that it will be a good one past the 21 days that I will continue to shine some light on complaining. I am learning that not everything makes sense based upon initial assumptions and expectations. Some things have, because this purpose of hoping to be calm and be more joyful is in fact true on day 18. My mind is not quite as anxious as it was when I began the process, and I have unfrozen some of my personality traits to take a look at them. So day 19 will be yet another day to establish this new way of being and work through this layer of my spirituality and towards a deeper sense of myself and my spirit in the grander scheme of things. Silas Lee teaches us that our development of a meditative practice offers us intentional time and space to shine out awareness onto our ignorance. When we meditate, we focus mindfulness onto our views, experiences, and attachments. We also, in Christian terms, spend contemplative time and space in identifying our passions or our sins. The human habit of ignorance is based upon our presumptions of reality 
in a sense, putting things into tight little metal boxes when in fact reality doesn't fit in them, nor should it. Silas knows that the Buddha taught that a fool who discerns his ignorance gains understanding and therefore becomes wiser. Whereas a fool who assumes that he is wise expresses and shares his foolishness. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope that I've offered you some wisdom into becoming a better person and impacting your organizations, your families, your neighborhoods, and the world at large about complaining or some other growth opportunity for you. If you enjoyed this episode or previous episodes, please take the time to follow us on Podbean or on Facebook or on Twitter. And we would greatly appreciate it if you would share this podcast with a friend, with a neighbor, or with someone who you think will benefit from it. Until the next time, I thank you and I offer you this blessing, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts, minds, bodies, and souls in the knowledge and love of the divine. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you today and always. Until next time, bye-bye.